Hey, welcome back to After the Episode, brought to you by Line Cutters, the adjustable ring that cuts fish in line. Ready. Hey, welcome. Uh, hey, welcome back to the spring episode of After the Episode. <laughs> it's just sneezed like 15 times, man. Yeah. Everything's blooming. Holy miracle. Jeez, are you having allergy problems? Because I am. Hey, what happened to your hand? <laughs> Is that when you punch me? Yeah, somebody said the other day, we're yes. going to have the episode where Teresa yes. finally hits top. I didn't film it, but I whipped his butt. That was butt. it. <laughs> no. uh, tuna. Tuna, my hand He has got a tuna. Fight with a tuna. Mm, yeah. yeah, more to come on that later next yeah. week. So this right. wasn't supposed to be an episode about... What is this one called? After the episode? Uh, what, what, what all is? about Teresa. That's what this one's going to be called. This is, why does Teresa catch all the fish? That's the Where title of this one. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. Well. So, we start out... This is actually a trip we took last week with some people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Mr. Sam. Uh, we had a great time. Sam and uh, Dan. Dan. Mm-hmm. And we had a great time with those folks. And me, Sam, and Dan were all fishing really hard. And, of course, Teresa was the first one to hook up. And that's what sparked... Mr. Dan hooked up on a redfish. Look at one of those wood bees in here. Big. He's going to drive us nuts. He's a carpenter bee. It's him. Tell him about Dan. No, Mr. Sam. Sam. Mr. Sam hooked up and he caught a redfish that was really small. We were fishing by Chica. Yeah. And uh, what happened? It was three guys and we were fishing hard. Mr. Sam. We were catching nothing. <laughs> Teresa stops in that little cut. I love that little cut. <clears throat> we were fishing, fishing popping corks and fresh dead. And were you having any luck? Not really, no. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about why you catch so many fish and your persistence and some of the techniques that you use. Why? Pop because court. girls roll and boys draw. <laughs> so next time, right here on 30 miles out. Thanks for watching. <laughs> popping cork, let's talk about that technique. Popping cork. Boat monkey makes a lot of noise. It's got a big chugger mouth on it, and it's good when it's really windy. I think H&H &H makes those, and you can pop those on and off onto a, a mono leader or floral leader. And we kind of use them as we need them. They still pop, they chug actually pretty good, but they're super convenient. You can be throwing a jig with soft plastic and then just pop that on and all of a sudden you're using a popping cork. Right. So I we like were, to keep those in the boat at all times. We were using these and we got to that cut and nothing hit anybody's that was, you know, bobbing around out there. So I took mine off and just put a, a fresh dead on my uh, jig head, threw it out and sure enough. I think everybody's, why does Teresa always catch the first fish? Why does Teresa always catch the fish? This is part of it. She's willing to do whatever it takes to catch the fish. Yes. I'm not. No. No. <laughs> I, if I want to catch fish on top water, I'll go all day and not catch one fish, but I wanted to catch one on top water. Teresa, if they're hitting top water, fine, but if they're not, she'll start changing it up. I'll go and to, she'll go down to cut bait if she has to to catch fish. After top water, I'll go to jerk shot on a jig head. And if they don't hit that, I'll switch to jerk shot on a jig head on a popping cork. <clears throat> and if they don't hit that, I'm just going to start throwing everything <laughs> <laughs> until I do catch something. Dynamite. Right. So I do catch fish, and I don't outfish you every time. So I want that to be clear. I'm, I don't outfish you every time. You outfish me a lot. A whole lot. I do stop and take more pictures of my fish. So have a little bit to do with it. But you do, a lot of times you are the first to hook up. I'd say, you know, 60% of the time, maybe 70. And I think it has something that has to do with your instincts too. You're always very in tune with the environment and what's going on. Yes. A lot of times you see stuff popping or blowing up before I do. I'm course, focused. We're all, we're all thinking about lot. different things. I'm doing yeah. a lot, always doing a lot of filming and talking to people and filming stuff. But, but even so, even if I'm not, you tend to notice stuff popping. Yeah, I watch the water surface. Yeah, I got, I got a little Apache in me too, so. That Apache comes out. Yeah, I scan the horizon <clears throat> if I see anything, then I move towards it. People always ask me, you know, people always say to Teresa a lot, you know, how do I get my wife to fish like, you know, fish all the time like you do? Or how do I get her into the sport? I think people don't really realize that Teresa... I didn't get into the sport. She didn't get into the sport. She is an outdoors person. She's an outdoor woman. She was raised in the outdoors. She was raised fishing. Yeah. And she's got it in her blood. It's not something she does. She can sharpen a knife with a stone and, and uh, oil or water. Spit. Or sp Ugh. You know, <laughs> to this day, I cannot figure out what she's doing. I can't, I can't mimic it. She gets a razor edge blade on her 
Spyderco knife, and I can I still cannot do it like she does it. When we're building, I often look to her for building tricks. I'm talking carpentry. She's a real tomboy, and this is not something that you uh, teach. No, <laughs> necessarily. not, not to an it adult means, woman. You yeah, can get them is, into it, but yeah. I, my dad was a carpenter and a fisherman, and he hunted. My sister's more hunting, I'm more fishing, and uh, carpentry. So. But, but having said that, you're a great bow hunter. But I didn't pick up bow hunting until I was 38, 39. But when we're bow hunting, she can out-track me. So she's just got it in her blood. It's it just it's a, it's a natural thing. That yeah. being said, there are some women that do go fishing and they do uh, start to desire. Like, like Pam Worth. Pam Worth, yes. She, you should check her out. She What did she say? It was a bucket list item mm -hmm. she wanted to do to go yeah, kayak she's fishing. Yeah, she's in it probably. And she turned them in fishes. And I swear she could outfish me any day of the week. It's like so, she's been fishing for for 15 yeah, years. Yeah, there are absolutely women that you can teach uh, yeah. or can pick up the hobby. It's just she's not been all. been exposed to it. Yeah, not all women are going to want to go fishing with you, which is okay. It's your guy time. They get pedicures and you go fishing. Yeah. No big deal. Um, I just, I don't, I can't talk them into it. I'd love to be able to, but I can't talk them into it. Um, and I love fishing. I mean, you look at all these pictures. There's a big old smile on my face. So some more techniques, Teresa. We talked some some about gulp and, and how you use gulp. You're a big fan of the jerk shad. Yeah. Tell them a little bit about shad. the jerk shad. It mimics a dying bait fish. So whether it's mid-column or on top or on the bottom, the way you bounce it, the tail has a lot of action. Um, you put this under a popping cork, right? Yeah. Or yeah. you'll bounce it off the bottom of yeah. the jig or Yeah. The reds are blowing up in the grass or something. I'll rig it weedless with a weedless hook and, and throw it in there so for a gentle presentation. When do you go to these over these? 99% um, of the time I'm fishing with a white or a chartreuse jerk shad. Um, when do you go to these? In, in delicate finesse situations. These? When I need to throw those. Or when I'm fishing very, very bottom for oh, sand trout. Well, I'll go to those when uh, the pinfish are eating the tail off of my jerk shad. I'll switch over to the shrimp because they can't get the tail off of them. So, I got a question to me specifically on what jig head I use. Um, bottom fishing, um, bridge, sheep's head, uh, anything I want to sink fast. Bull reds under the bridge. Bull reds under the bridge, yeah. Um, the lighter one there that you're holding, is that an eighth or a quarter? Quarter ounce. Quarter ounce. That's the one I use on the flats. Um, it's lighter. It doesn't sink quite as fast. It gives me that um, bouncing action, you know, where you hit bottom and then you flutter up and then you hit bottom and you flutter up. So three eighths and quarter ounce are my go-to jig heads. Right. And Ty when showed on a different after the episode how to do the. When would rig you go a worm hook on, on a jerk shed? When would you do that? On the flats when there's a lot of grass. Yeah, any shallow grass or a grassy situation, I use the weedless, and you don't have to worry about any grass. Yeah, that redfish you caught that day, quarter ounce jig head and chartreuse jerk, jerk shad. Now, uh, why'd you throw in that spot? Because they just looked fishy. It looked red Eating fishy to me. Yeah. There was marsh grass. There was marsh grass. There was a cut. The water was going through it. No, it was coming out of it. It was coming out of it. And there was a cut, and I knew on this side of it, where where the um, water was flowing to, there was a redfish probably sitting there, waiting to ambush some prey coming out. All right, that brings us to top water. Your one of your favorites. Uh, yeah. What's I, your favorite top water lure? Because I brought my box. That's another thing. I have my own boxes, and I rig them up. There's a bee in here. The clown used to be. Woo. That used to be my absolute favorite, the Clown Spook Jr. Saltwater. Now I kind of like this one. And I like the Top Dog. What do you I use the Top Dog beach walking when I want something that will throw like a torpedo, uh, heavy. I actually use it offshore a lot too. I love the knocker. It's a big bait. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, that's one of my favorites. I have that in orange and blue. Um, the, the Spook Junior, I have it in several hot pink colors um, because, you know, I'm a girl and I like hot pink, clearly. And I don't think That's that, cool. I'm like Ty, I don't think the color is nearly as important as the cadence of it. Um, How you walk it? I walk it slow. I started out slow, yeah. 
I and mean, you, speed it up if you need to. You see, women are are really finesse a lot of times, and men tend to be power, and so that can make a huge difference in some things, especially like walking the dog because it's such a finesse thing. So she's a woman, so she's taking her time and being delicate. She's going, choo, 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 and I'm going, choo, 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 choo. nothing, and she's going. Choo. So, I even pause it. Yeah, some, I'll stop it. sometimes you know I'm patience just. Blow up just, on the pause. Um, and then of course I'll adapt and see. She say I'm going slow, and then I'll try it, and then I'll start getting hit. So, it just depends. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. I'm going fast, and she's not getting any hits. Right. Just kind of naturally, you know what you what you gravitate towards. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yep. What else we got? All right, we're moving on to offshore BTB. You hook offshore, up a lot. Offshore, I do. Um, yes. Uh, I keep two rods out at the same time. At the same time? Yep. I keep a uh, live bait out in the back, down low, and then I will fish uh, up front with... Uh, Got a bee? <laughs> yeah. Bee problem? <laughs> yeah. He's bothering me. He's trying to get me, yeah, honey. Yeah, I'm sure he is. He is. No, he's not. Um, I will <laughs> fish... Stop jerking around. You don't get stung. Out front. He's in my space. Just be... And uh, I, I fish out front with uh, top water or, or uh, jigs or... See? Just don't move. You smell good. Stop. I can't do this. She's going to be fine. Okay. I fish out front with um, whatever I want to throw. So you're throwing so, top water in front of you. I'm throwing top water or I'm throwing jigs or I'm throwing a suspension bait out front. Right. Or I'm throwing a bait on top. But what's happening in the back? The one behind me is down low. So she's always got a live bait behind her. She does this on the flats, too. I so many too. sharks. Yeah. Because so, down low. So she's got one out, but she's not just throwing something in front of her. She's got a live bait behind her. She does that a lot on the flats when she's not swatting wasps. She, you're always taking your time. Once mm -hmm. again, you take your time offshore to catch more bait. I'll catch three or four, and I'm ready to go. I'm impatient. She'll sit there and catch ten. You'll catch three, and you're ready to go. And I'm like still catching. I want to have at least 12 before we head out. And you're like, we'll catch it out there. And I know we're not going to catch any out there. So I want to take what I need offshore all the way with me in the torpedo bait bucket. And uh, that way I have plenty. So I have more bait than you. And you'll steal my bait too. <laughs> I always know if I don't have enough, I'll just get some of her yeah. bait. Or I'll just go get lunch. some of her lunch. I don't have enough bait. Yeah. Well, I think what we've learned today is that she's a little more patient. She's willing to work an area for longer. She's willing to sit there and figure it out longer. She's willing to sit there and catch more bait for longer. So it's just a patience thing that wins out for her a lot of times. So there's your answer, people. You always say, well, why is she always out fishing you, Ty? You got it. This is it. Y'all been saying it forever. So here's your answer. More patience. More patience. <laughs> That's it. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see y'all next time right here on 30 Miles Out and after.